Are you a portrait photography business owner looking to attract more clients and increase your sales? You're in luck. Today, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be sharing some of my top photography marketing strategies that I've gained over my 25 years of running Sarah Petty Photography. As a photography business coach and portrait photography studio owner, I completely understand the challenges that come with running a photography business, especially as a mom. That is why I've dedicated my career to helping photography business owners build the business of their dreams while also balancing their personal lives. In this video, I'll be sharing some of my top tips on how to attract more clients and increase sales. So grab a hot cup of tea, sit back and let's get started on building the business of your dreams. And remember, building a successful photography business while still being present for your family is not only possible, but it's also what this channel is about. So if you're ready to make your dreams a reality, snap the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you're notified when new lessons come out. Look, as you listen to this, you will be seeing marketing so much more clearly. Let's jump in and start with developing a strong brand. As you know, right now, the photography industry is incredibly crowded with low price competition and it can be challenging to stand out. That's why having a clear and consistent branding strategy and a brand that resonates with your ideal client that is critical. A disjointed brand with five logos in different colors and different styles and the website not matching the this and the that, it communicates that you're disheveled and that likely you're a DIYer and you're worth less. We want to be worth more and get higher end clients. There are five main elements to a strong brand that I discuss in our book, Worth Every Penny. I even go into greater detail in our video, which you can watch right here. But here's a quick overview. Number one, your identity. Your identity is like the face of your business. It includes everything about your company, from your logo to your website to your style. It's everything. And a strong identity and consistent identity is the foundation for a strong brand. You can't build a strong brand on a weak identity. So consider hiring or better yet, trading with a professional designer to help you create a strong identity. Number two, you can't please everyone. Trying to please everyone will end up pleasing no one. Instead, focus on your unique selling proposition. You've probably heard that before, USP what makes you different, and target your ideal customer. If you're like, I just want to photograph everything and everybody, you're not worth more. We know a knee surgeon is worth more than a general practitioner. So figure out who you love to photograph and start there. And early on, I photographed a lot of things and I realized, okay, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. My jam is little kids and babies. And so I doubled down on that. So if you haven't gotten to that point yet, figure it out quickly and double down on your unique selling proposition and finding your ideal customer. Number three, your reputation. When you're a small business, you are your reputation. So your reputation is everything as a business owner. Seriously, pay attention to every detail and have the highest integrity. This includes everything from how you talk in front of the young people who are in your carpool to what you post on social media when you're having a bad day. You are your brand and always remember that. Number four, your consistency. Consistency is key for any brand, but it's especially important for boutique businesses. You've got to be trustworthy, reliable, and steady in what you offer your clients and how you interact with them in every experience. And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. If you mess up, that actually helps your relationship because you can show them that you will take care of them no matter what. And number five, your gush worthiness. Are you doing extraordinary things day in and day out to give customers a reason to talk about your business? Are you? If not, pause, go do that. And it's not about gimmicks or promotional stunts, 
but it's about doing the little things that make a big difference. For example, at the end of the year, we gift our clients something unexpected, small canvases, holiday ornaments, and I write a personal detailed note when I send it to them or if I deliver it to them. That's even better, right? Gush worthy. Oh my gosh, my photographer from six months ago came to my office and brought me this. Check it out. Gush, 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 gush. Now let's talk about leveraging social media to reach potential clients and partners. And you'd be surprised how many people think, oh, social media, I'm gonna post about a mini session and poof, my business is gonna explode. It's not that. I recommend my students use social media a little differently than most people. First off, you don't have to do paid ads. Until you know how to build relationships and talk to clients, paid ads are just gonna be a drain on you. Second, limit your time that you're spending on social media to 15 minutes twice a day. Literally set an alarm. And I'm telling you, go look on your phone to see how much time you're wasting on social media every day. Now you're seeing that it is a business tool. And if you really want to build your business, you probably want to write this next thing down. You want to use social media as a solution, not an escape. So many people want to escape the troubles of their life by being on social media. No, now it's a solution for how are you going to get clients? You go on social media with intention to connect with local small business owners who serve your ideal client and people that you want to work with. We put them in a group we call Dream 100. Chet Holmes really launched this concept in his book, The Ultimate Sales Machine. It's one of my favorite selling books. And his daughter, Amanda Holmes, just relaunched his book and wrote the foreword, which is really touching because he died when she was younger and she took over his business and is keeping it going, which I know he would be so proud of her. But he introduced Dream 100. So it's sort of where you go out in the world and you look at who might be a partner for you and then you woo them. So how, are, how can you be a cheerleader for them? By commenting on social media, reposting for them, supporting them, tagging them, direct messaging them, introducing them, supporting the charities that they're involved in, referring people to them, and just being a connector for them. Those relationships don't happen overnight and that's what most photographers aren't willing to do. The old school way of learning marketing doesn't work anymore. It's about looking at the long-term game. It's about building relationships one at a time. And when you do that, you have a business that no one can compete with. It's no longer business school of learning and taking a test. It's about getting involved in your local business community. I have so many local businesses I love that I can talk about on social media. I can create content with them. I can feature them. If you're a blogger, you can photograph them and, and write about them on your blog. And, oh gosh, this one's so important. When you're creating content for your own business, stop being so salesy. All you've got to do is educate people. Make it education versus promotion. So you're talking about why framing is important, why wall portraits are important. For me, I didn't exist as a child in photography anywhere. And now this is going to be the lost generation. All these kids are photographed and nobody's printing anything. Where are those digital files going to be in 30, 50, 60 years? No one's going to be able to find them. My third point is all about offering value added services. So instead of trying to see how can I do it for less, how can I charge more and increase that value for the consumer? Because everyone else is going with this strategy, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. So look at how can you identify additional incentives that you can offer to your clients that will increase your sales. You can do that in the pricing strategy, right? By saying, hey, look, when your order gets to this amount, I'm going to give you this bonus or it's going to include something or you're going to qualify for something. So for example, with my clients, when they get over a certain amount, I give them an app on their phone with their images because you know how when you have images from an event or whatever it is on your phone and you're trying to find them from two years ago, 
This is an app that goes on the homepage of their phone. Clients love it. Keep in mind, they only get the images that they purchase, but makes sense to want to buy an album because then you meet the minimum and you get the images that are beautifully retouched for your app. I've had students give a viewfinder. Remember those are big red and you click the little button in the circle, sort of like slides goes around in a circle, which is amazing. We also offer with our larger senior sessions, a sibling session, or heck, it could even be a best friend session when they get to an order of a certain level. So we're always, always, always looking at how can we add value. Now, this last thing I wanna share with you is a missing link, a piece that connects everything together when we teach marketing and it's something that nobody knows how to do. And it's a promotional piece we call a dog whistle because gosh, when I use it, I, it identifies my right fit client like nobody's business. This is a marketing piece that screams, I am different than any other photographer and I am so creative, all right? So this was one I did when I first started my business. It folded out four times. It showed a couple products that I offer. No pricing, no anything. And people would come in and say, I want this, I want this. And I attracted the right fit clients. And people always ask, you know, I, where do I get a business card? And I say, stop it with the business cards. Most photographers feel legitimate when they have a business card. And guys, we're in a digital world. People don't use business cards. When I'm talking to people and they say, oh, you're a photographer, do you have a business card? I say, actually, I don't, but you know, I just printed this piece and I pull out something that bends or twists. I mean, I have so many of them. This was a high school senior piece. People freak out and they're like, oh my gosh, who are you? And is this something you can do for me? Are these your clients? I want to hire you. Or they go, oh, that's nice. That's not going to be my client. That's why it's a dog whistle. I hope you've enjoyed this video because these are just a few of my top marketing strategies to help you do what? Attract more clients and increase your sales. And I want you to remember building a successful, profitable photography business takes some time, but it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be crazy expensive like it is to start many businesses. But yeah, you do have to invest some time and some money to get there, but I'm telling you it's worth it. And my friend, if you found these tips helpful, seriously, be sure to join my Facebook group where we throw out all kinds of cool resources and support to help you build the business of your dreams. Hey, thanks for watching this channel. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do it right down below so that you can get more steady content to help you grow your photography business. And if you especially love today's video, click right here to get more actionable steps. Thanks for watching my friend and I'll see you in the next video.